Question four of the May 2013 RT paper one. Um, we're going to go into the next SQL statement, which is quite a big one. It's eight marks, so there's a lot that we need to do. Um, they list all the things that we need here. So we need the customer number, the name, the surname. Now, when I start seeing order date and who processed, it starts, um, and because there's so many marks, it reminds me that I should do just double check my database. And here in my orders table, I'll notice that there's order date and processing there, but in the customers is the customer number, name, and surname. So yeah, I'm using two tables, so I'm going to have to join them. So let's go into the SQL for that button, and we are basing it on all the people who were processed by Bongi and on the 8th of November 2010. So we're going to write our code over here. So we've got this SQL strings, which is going to equal. Now we start listing, because we've got two tables, we're probably going to um, start listing all the um, the, the table that each field comes from. So customer dot customer number, for example. So we start listing them individually like that. Customer dot cust name. And then we're gonna have customer dot cust surname. And those are the customer from the customer table. Now we also need the date that's gonna come from the orders table. And so we're gonna have the orders table. Just double check if it's order or orders. It is orders, and so that's orders dot order date, and orders dot processed bar. Just make sure that your spelling is exactly the same as the fields in the database. Now we're going to add on to that string. We're going to add on the where which tables did it come from? So it obviously came from the customers table as well as the orders table. And now we've got our conditions. Now you would think that there are only two conditions with so the process by and the, the date, but there's actually a third condition. Because we're using two tables, we need to make sure that we link those two tables. And the link between them, if you look at the database, they both are linked by customer number. So there's a customer number customer number in orders and a customer number in um, customers. So that is the link between the two tables. So we're going to specify that customers dot cust number is the same as the orders dot customer so there's the link and at the same time we want to also make sure that the order orders dot order date is the 8th of November 2010 now if I just type in 8 of the November now this is probably going to be American so we probably should have the month first then the day then the year, but just to be aware, because we're dealing with dates, we actually need to put these hashes around them, just so that they know that we're working with a date. So that's the one condition, and the other condition was that the orders dot processed bar was by our fellow year called Bongi. Just make sure that your spelling is all correct. Okay, that looks all there. Obviously, we put the single quote just to end the string that's in Delphi. So our conditions, as you can see, the customer number equals to the customer number from the two different tables. The order date is correct, and the processed bar. Now, just double check if it's not processed bar. There's already a spelling spike, so we might don't want to get errors for that. So processed bar. So let's run it and see if there are any errors. Um, obviously, it's saying, oh, obviously, we just missed a semicolon on the line before. And yes, yeah, help our Bongani error. So there's error. Customer dot cust number um, has no default value. So let's just find out what my mistake was there. Um, if we look at the table, the table is actually called customers. So there already I've made a spelling mistake. So always be aware of the names of your tables as well as their fields. Um, making sure it's the same there, same there. Yes, that's correct. That looks all fine. Okay, it should work now. And there we go. All the people on that date helped by Bongi. Okay. In every exam, you will get a question where it's not just your normal select. There will be an update or a delete or an insert. In this case, they're asking us to modify, which means change, but it's already there. So that means it's an update. So we're updating the is developed field to true for all the orders placed before the 3rd of October. So we're going to go to our table, and that's for this button. 
So in this case, you'll see that we've got to write the SQL and then that it will execute the SQL and then show us the results of where that is true. So we can see our results. So we can just write this over here. So I want to say update. Now we're going to say which table are we updating um, is developed. So let's just make sure we got the right table. We've got there's no is developed here. If you look at orders, there's is developed. So obviously we're going to use this one. So the orders database, the table. So we're going to update orders. And now the next part of the update is that we must tell it what it's going to set. So we set in the field that's called is developed, and we're going to make sure that that is equal to true. Now, because it's a um, tick or a boolean um, variable in the database, you can see there it's just a boolean or a yes no that we can just say true. We don't have to put it in double quotes. Now, if I ran it like this, it's going to change all of them to true. So we must make sure that we've got our where condition in here. And our condition is where the order date is it order date or process date. I think it's order date. Order date. Now, the order date must be, we said, before the 3rd of October. So we know we do the month first. So that's the 10th slash 03 slash 2010. And we also know that it's a date. So we must put it in hashtags. Okay, so now we need to determine what does before mean. Well, before that date means we want all the small numbers. So a date that's before that would be smaller than this number. So we actually want the order date to be less than the 2010-10-03. So we're going to run it like that. Let's run it and see if it works. And we're going to modify all the records. And there we go. All the ones before that date have now been changed to true. Okay, for question 1.6, it's the last question and six marks, so we're going to try and strong. Um, we must list the number and surname and points as well as cell phone number of all the customers whose cell phone number begins with the same three digits as specified via input box. You'll normally find in the exam paper there will be some question where it's not just plain SQL, where we actually got to give it input from Delphi, and then we must integrate Delphi in the SQL. So this is that type of example, and it must be done for all customers with the customer numbers from CN2000 to CN250. So first part, let's do it bit by bit. We need to obviously get information from the user, and there they show us the... Um, the input box. So we need to have an input box over here. So I'm going to go to that button. And another clue here is there's a variable that they've declared here that we actually haven't used in the code. So that's also another clue that we actually need to use some sort of Delphi code here. So that's going to equal now. It's already a string, so that's quite nice. So we're going to use straight away from the input box. And the first field will be what is displayed in the blue bar at the top of that little box. So in this, we're going to say search per cell phone provider that'll be in the blue block now the block that's just above the text box we write what we're going to do there so I'm going to say enter remember to put your single quotes enter and we're going to give the possible codes that they could do so 072 there could be an 073 there could be an 082 there could be an 083 or there could be an 084 And then the last parameter for an input box is what will be displayed inside um, the actual edit box that's inside it. I'm going to put nothing so that it's a blank. So there we go. There we've got our marks for that part. Now, now we can write the SQL. Now for the SQL, we obviously need to select certain things. So we're going to select. Now just double check what we need to select. Yeah, they tell us the customer number, customer surname, customer title, customer points, customer SAID, and customer cell. So as you can see, those are all, or should all be in here. There we go, they're all in the customers table. So let's go, we're going to select the cust number. We're going to select the customer surname, the customer name. Now in this case, they didn't want the name, they just want the title. Just to double check. Yes, there's no name, just the title. We wanted the customer points. The cust. Sorry, I'm surprised there's no custard in this. 
customer cell. So those are all the fields that we want to put in. And now we're going to add on to that. We're going to say the SQL string. And we're going to modify it so we can add on more. So I don't have to go over the line. And so we can say from which table. Obviously this is from the customer's table. And now for our conditions. Now our conditions, it said it must start with that. If you just double check, it must start with whatever was entered. Now um, we can say, we're going to say obviously that it's the customer cell that must start with it. So cus cell must be like, so we use the like. Now here's the tricky part. Now if it was 084, we could just have done um, the text 084 like this, and then we would have put a percentage sign afterwards and then left it like that. That's what we would have done for 084. If it was 03, it would just be an 083. But because we're now getting that value from Delphi, from the, this variable S cell, we now need to incorporate this inside this SQL statement. So now I just type it like I would for one example, and then I obviously don't want the 084 anymore. So I'm going to terminate the string there. I'm then going to add the S cell variable. And then I'm going to add a new string to have, make sure I've got that little part at the end there. Okay, so just make sure you type it out like that. Remember, you cannot type it all in the blue part, all within the, the single quotes, because it's going to read it as a, a single piece of, t of text. It's going to read SL instead of the value that is inside SL. So we've got that over there. And then at the end, we're going. I'm just going to copy this to make my life easier. So we've had the one condition where that and the other conditions, we said that the customer must be between um, CN2000 and CN250. Uh, now obviously you could use a greater than less than, we can also use between. So I'm going to use it between here. And the other condition is that the customer number must be between and remember it's text, so it must be CN2000, 200, and CN250. Remember those are all in double quotes. Okay, if we got all our conditions, there was only those two conditions, correct? And we've got all the stuff that's been displayed. So I'm going to run it and hope for the best. No error so far if I run it. Now remember, here's my input box. I'm going to type in a number, which one did they recommend that we type in? They gave in... 072 and they said this is the answer for 072 so let's see if we get the same answer 072 okay okay there's cust point okay you can guess what was my mistake I uh, obviously spelled that incorrectly so I'm gonna go back to my code and cust point is the issue it should be customer points bad Mr. Long let's try it again 072 and there we go there is all our data all the customer cells that are in that range, the 072, and all the customer numbers are between CN200 and CN250. So it looks like it all worked. So that's the SQL question. Hope this has been useful, and we're going to move on to the OOP question next.